Flux, redefining your lifestyle presents the return of the Singapore Parenting Festival. Join our amazing hosts in a series of eight free webinars that cover fertility and pregnancy concerns, parenting tips for newborns to fussy eaters, living with COVID and vaccinations, and guides from preschool to PSLE. Register now and attend our webinars for your chance to get an exclusive SPF goodie bag while stocks last. The Singapore Parenting Festival is proudly brought to you by Mediacorp and the Asian Parent. Platinum Partner, 100% organic drip chicken essence with cordyceps. Gold Partners, Dumex Dugro, comprehensive nutrients. Scott's Vitamin C for kids' immunity. Nature One Dairy, your partner in parenthood. PCF Sparkle Tots, we sparkle lives. And the following silver and other partners. Hi everyone, thank you for taking the time to join us this evening on webinar number three of the Singapore Parenting Festival, which is proudly presented to you by the Asian Parent and Media Corp. Okay, so before I get started, let me give a shout out to our lovely partners. Okay, so first up are our platinum partners, Hydroflux and Yuyan Sang. Okay, followed by our gold partners, Dumex, Scott's, PCF Sparkle Tots and Nature One Dairy. Followed by our silver partners for the Ministry of Health Singapore, Baby Dove, Fertus Fertility Center, and Prudential. And our content partners are Center for Fathering, Moms for Life, and Dads for Life, and Baby Pass. So do try to stay in tune with this festival, okay? Because we will be bringing you lots of exciting contests, informative webinars, and even a grand sale, okay? So for today's topic, I think most of you already know you're excited for this. We'll be touching on is Got Milk? Learn to be a breastfeeding pro. Okay, so before we start, there are some house rules, okay, that we need all of you to follow. Do note that all of you are automatically muted, okay? And questions are welcome. Please use the Q&A box for your questions, okay? And the Q&A session will be at the end of this whole webinar only, okay? And you have to enter it through the Q&A tab. Do note that this webinar is recorded as well. And we have six lucky attendees who will win a $50 Shopee voucher each. I think all of you are looking forward to that, okay? And winners will be announced at the end of the webinar as well. Okay, and there's also goodie bags up for grabs. We just need you to scan this QR code, okay? Fastest fingers first. First 150 attendees, you get to scan. I mean, if you scan this QR code, you will get this goodie bag. So be fast, scan now, all right? And uh, here's an introduction about me, a little bit about myself. If you do not know me, you've not seen me around, my name is Jane Serene. Uh, I'm very active on social media because I'm a mother of two and that is my full-time job. I wear many hats. So one of it is my full-time job as a mom. I have two lovely kids, uh, my three-year-old daughter, Shayera, and my two-year-old son, Zane. Yes, a very small age gap of like a year and a half. And so I'm mainly on social media, I'm holding giveaways and I do a lot of posts catering to the whole motherhood scene. And during my free time, I like to head to the gym and it's because I'm a bubble tea addict. So yep, I really, really need to go to the gym. Okay, and then um, moving on, I have my first guest with me. It's none other than Dr. Wong Bo Boy. I think many of you are very familiar with her. She's very well known in the mummy community. Okay, so Dr. Wong Bo Boy, she has played a pioneering role in the creation of key parent craft institutions and services in Singapore. She has been instrumental in the implementation and establishments of guidelines and various management methods for both mother and child. Maybe Dr. Wong can give a little wave to everyone out there. <laughs> okay, and next up, I have physician Eric. He's a TCM expert with Yu Yan Sang Singapore. Okay, so Eric has graduated from the Beijing University of Chinese Medicine degree in medicine and Nanyang Technological University degree in biomedical sciences and traditional Chinese medicine. So Eric, you can say a little hi on your side to everyone. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Okay, and I would need all of you to, if you have any, uh, okay, I'm very sorry. Okay, wait, it's poll time first. All right. So here's the burning question. I need all of you to answer. How long do you plan to breastfeed? Okay, please log in your answers in the poll box over there. Okay, so it's A, three months, followed by B, six months, and C, 12 months. 
or D, as long as baby wants to. Okay, so we will be tabulating the results. And um, we'll show it to you in a little bit. So moving on, um, I'd like to share a little bit about myself. I was a very low supply mom. So uh, this webinar, I feel is really, very useful to a lot of you out there, especially if you're a first time mother, because even I myself, I had to go for a lot of webinars. I, I wasn't very sure about what's going on with my body. You know, I was just really, really having a low supply and struggling a lot with it all. So I think it will be very insightful for today's session for the lot of you to, um, you know, if you're struggling with it and then you can pick up a thing or two. Oh, what do you know? The results are out. Okay, the least of you said three months. I'm not surprised there, but I'm quite surprised about the as long as baby wants to. So, you know, the question for me is how long, you know, is as long as baby wants to because I actually personally have a friend who, well, surprisingly, she breastfed her baby until wasn't a baby anymore, was practically like 12 years old. So yeah, that's quite crazy. <laughs> so okay, let me move this webinar over to Dr. Wong. Hi, Dr. Wong. Pleasure to have you here. Hi. We can, uh, yeah. can you hear me, all of you? Hi. Yes, can hear you. Thank Hello. you for the kind uh, introduction, Jane. Uh, I'm pleasure. also very honored to be invited today to share with uh, no, the moms and dad, gentlemen and ladies out there about breastfeeding. We are very happy to have you here. <laughs> Let's start. Breastfeeding is never quite easy. As an international you know, consultant, I share a lot about breastfeeding. Often being invited as a keynote speaker or just an international chairperson. And the rest you can see, I strongly involved in education itself. Let's go about breastfeeding. There's so many challenges out there. When I did my RCT research, and the first two weeks to one month, a lot of mother gave up breastfeeding. And then from the very shocking finding, most of them assumption, low milk supply. And when I actually, by the survey prevalence of Singapore, 96% mother breastfeeding, but only 50% actually exclusive breastfeeding. Why? Purely because there are a lot of reasons, all right? And uh, it, there is a lot of deterrent as well and challenges. So today, my tips is to start right. You must have the knowledge. Later, we'll go through one by one skills and the tools. I developed latch and effect. Uh, latch means deep latch. Effect means effectiveness of the baby swallowing from the breast or drainage of the breast. A lot of people miss the second batch. Positioning of your baby, and then you have to learn to prevent problem and troubleshooting. You need to support gentlemen out there. You play a very important role in the success of breastfeeding. You know, being there make a lot of difference. So mother, don't forget, being your, having your husband and your family member there and also a helper, sometimes you're very, very pampered. So you must rest. Yeah. And then if you don't rest and you're very anxious, you're very actually, you know, tense, then it can play a major part in low milk supply. You must be aware and alert of uh, and avoid a lot of mistake. And that is important itself. So Dr. Wong, like personally for me, right, I didn't go through all the steps of confinement because I was so busy, you know. So like I said, I was a low supply mom. So I'm wondering whether that contributed to, you know, the low supply of milk that I was facing. You're right, Jane. You know, you're not only one. A lot of mother out there actually don't understand, you know. And uh, today I'll go through certain facts with you. The anatomy also play a part. Because, you know, sometimes you don't understand what is the, how milk is produced. It can contribute to a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiousness and things like that. And mother becomes so anxious, search here and search there, call here and call there, eventually don't understand and make yourself very tired. So therefore, is after delivery, you're already tired. Your <laughs> lifestyle already changed. You have yes. now changed your lifestyle totally because you'll be feeding, you know, sometimes even 10 to 12 times a day. And even at night, you have to do night duty. Wouldn't you be tired? So this is a structure. So number one, there are branches of grapes. 
they produce the milk and they channel down through the little dots. After that, they channel through the major dot and they go through the nipple hole. And when they be suckle, I also always like to tell you, all right, sizes also got no difference in it. I've been oh. asked very frequently. Yes. Big or small. Oh. Okay. Does it make a lot of difference? <laughs> I was wondering if the, you know, because how you have to cradle the baby, then if, you know, the breast is quite small, right? I'm wondering if it's going to be harder to... <laughs> <laughs> Big and small, Jane, has mm. no difference. It's only the fat they lay down. I see. Breast purely make up, uh, consists of fat. So, small one, actually less problem than the big one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> because sometimes mother, they're afraid in case of they suffocate the baby. It's too big. Oh, and yeah, then number two, sense. also sometimes is the awkwardness. They try to latch the baby and the breast is pretty big and they're so afraid it will suffocate the baby. And sometimes they make mistakes by freeing the nose. If you do that, you're going to have another problem. And also sometimes they actually is very heavy and the posture, the back and the neck, later we'll talk about it more, going to be affected because it, the gravity is pulling you forward. If you don't do it right, subsequently a lot of other factors involved, you're going to have lots of problems. So, so would you say well, the posture of a mother, so sorry to cut you there, would you say the posture of a mother can, sorry. you know, the, it will affect the milk ducts, is it? Uh, it will fill the milk flow and it will generally make your energy very low because your neck is frozen, your shoulders are frozen, your muscles are tense up. So, you know, a new way you can actually, you know, relax and let the milk flow easily. Oh dear, okay. So I you're see. very tense up. Yeah. So imagine any form of pain or any form of tension can interfere with the milk production itself. Okay. <laughs> very important, early weeks, by research, gestational age. By the time baby, you know, uh, GIT tracks begin about 20 weeks. By the time you're 33 to 36 weeks, coordination and suckling and swallowing is fully established. So most of the time we say, should the baby is born by 34 weeks gestation, we, are, we shouldn't be worried so much about it. But there are other factors. So imagine, the latching is very critical. The baby lips, why they must flange outwards and why they must flange downwards and seal the edge of areola because they actually help to create vacuum. Right, later on, I'll show you more picture. And then the nose literally just touched by the nostril. You can see the nostril is free. The chin must touch the breast. There's a basic you know, factor about the structure onto the breast. One baby, actually the mouth is, uh, actually the volume is quite small inside the mouth because the thick vocal pads and the big fat tongue, they help to actually, you know, create what we call suction and increase the volume and then release what we call the suckling effects. So baby able to suck much better. Unfortunately, sometimes, Baby are born full term, but unable to suckle. Then, father, you play an important part. I get very upset when I walk into nursery, I see the feet child, they're not interested, not suckling, and then sleepy and things. There are various reasons, but most important, maybe baby doesn't know how to suck. So you got to scrub your hand clean, and basically I put the baby so you can see much better. Okay, you can see better now. Index finger or the middle finger, scrub it clean and you support the baby by the neck and palm on his back and you do suck training. So outer and the gum and the inside. So you brush and then repeat for four corners. After that, put this at the junction, right to there. It's called the, between the heart and the soft junction. You press it in, that will trigger off what we call the suck uh, no reflex center. After that, turn it around, move the tongue about and see the tongue can follow you. After they stroke it out, the tongue should be able to come out beyond the lower gum. And then the baby will learn to wrap his tongue on your finger and sucks, you know, suckling. That is one fact that father can do. 
Next, very important, let's look at animation. So let's Only watch to your understand video. how lechon affects your comfort. Let's look inside at the roof of the baby's mouth. Behind the baby's gums are ridges. Behind the ridges is the baby's heart palate. When your baby takes your breast into his mouth, if your nipple lands near the front of his mouth, your nipple will press against his heart palate. This is called a shallow latch, which can cause discomfort for you as he breastfeeds. If your baby breastfeeds with a shallow latch repeatedly, the friction and the pressure may eventually cause you pain and even skin damage. Further back in your baby's mouth, the palate changes from hard to soft. Some call the area near this soft palate the comfort zone. To get a better idea where this is, use your own tongue to find your soft palate. When your baby takes your breast deeply into his mouth and latches on, so that your nipple lands in the comfort zone, there is no undue friction or pressure as your baby breastfeeds. Latching on within the comfort zone is where breastfeeding is most comfortable for you and most effective for your baby. Next, early challenges. Baby doesn't know how to latch. So imagine your baby is not guided properly and you're not holding your baby properly. It affects a lot. Plus, it's look at the oral. If the baby is going to chew on your nipple and not cover the area, and if the lower chin is too far away from the, you know, the breast tissue, baby is just literally chomping on your nipple. So therefore, mother say, oh, oh, I'm going to have very awful sore nipple. Of course, you have sore nipple because you're not latching deeply. So latching deeply is a, what we call deep latch. That was one of my research factors that is important. The baby is the first factor to overcome. So otherwise, you're going to end up even one latch. You're going to be very sore. Sore nipple, very common problem as well, besides low milk supply. And mother got surface like this. I call the raspberry surface, or some even call the strawberry surface. It's not even. And because of this, if you do not do deep latch, and this rough surface, you know, which is protruding, may hit the roof of the palate of the baby. You end up very sore. And nipples, doesn't matter whether it's large nipple or small nipple, pointed one or flat one or inverted, all mother can breastfeed. Same with the sizes, as I mentioned before. The only thing is that, you know, if you do not latch on properly, this is where I commonly see pinching. The nipple become pinched by the baby. And you're going to end up with quite a bit of problem. So how can you double check yourself? Very simple task. When you're latching your baby, insert a clean finger just between the gum of the baby and release because you need to release the vacuum. When baby suckle, they're going to have vacuum. Once released, the nipple come out, it should be elongated and it should be actually plateau. It should not be sharpened up like a, like a you know, lipstick or it cannot be all raw and red and inflamed and it cannot be blanched or bruised. These are common sense. So have a quick look and see yourself. This is called involvement in breastfeeding. And if you call stone nipple, must I stop breastfeeding? Do you need to stop breastfeeding, Jane? Dr. Wong, I was wondering, right, would you rather, I mean, would you say that people should continue having the baby latch on or should they take, um, you know, like a breast pump and all that so that they can prevent maybe mastitis from happening, you know, because I, I, I understand that uh, bacteria, you know, can enter the glands or okay. something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I will share about that later on, but now it's a sore nipple. So if it's slow nipple, if you've got dirty hand, of course, bacteria can enter yeah. because of the cracked area of the skin, what we call portal entry, then you can lead to mastitis. Most important, this is a, you know, mastitis can have two phases, can be non-infection stage. And then if you do not match, manage on properly, they're going to show you a bit more, then it can develop into severe infected, 
you know. And then if again, it's a vicious cycle, it is infected and the breast is raw later to show you a picture and it's inflamed, it's hard, it's painful. Mother even run the temperature or even feel very tired and it's so painful. And that is mastitis, two form. So if it's non-infected, uh, uh, so what we have to do is put the baby on the latch, let the baby empty the breast. And oh. then, you know, if you feel that baby unable to empty all, then of course you can pump. But I'll discuss about pumping later on. But do you need to stop? No. What you have to do, Jane, offer the good side first, then offer the poor side second. When you're doing the sore nipple, when you it's sore, cradle frictions there, football frictions here, and lie down frictions there. So you give it alternate position, let it heal so that you're not friction on the same soreness all the time. Second point to take note, don't ever, ever wear breast pad direct because you're oh. soft skin. So when yes. you take off, it's going to be very <laughs> sore and bleeding. So put plenty of breast milk on it. If you need to put a bit of cream, breastfeeding healing cream, and that's what i done a lot of research on cabbage. Put a small piece of cabbage, not only help it to heal, at least it act as a lubricant prevent friction against the nipple. 24 hours, it should heal. Right, you can see improvement. If not, there's much more serious than that. I had then a friend who put a uh, tea bag. She put it there and she said it actually helps. <laughs> Have you heard about well, putting tea bags? A lot of remedies out there, Jane, but whether <laughs> it's uh, RCT research or what we call the, you know, uh, uh, scientifically proven, but every uh, ancient day, right back to the ancient day, you know, when I did the study on fever, the even the old Italian used dirty socks and they soak in water and put it on the forehead. Yeah, wow. that's a lot of things. <laughs> so that's why there is a lot of things uh, that some work, some may not work at all. So second problem I'd like to share with you also is fluffy called the engorgement. It's another common problem. Usually people always say to me, I have engorgement. When I did the RCT research, I found that actually, from fourth stage onward, I developed these stages of our engorgement. The milk is not flowing. By the time you go to the sixth stage, the breast is rock hard like a melon. And when you squeeze, there's nothing come out. So yeah. therefore, you cannot pump anymore. If you're going to pump, you're going to cause more problem. So therefore, my research was cabbage leaves. Cold cabbage reduce vascularity. Cold cabbage actually, you know, reduce the hardness then reduce the pain, and then th therefore the milk able to flow, and therefore we need to do is latch the baby on. So application of cabbage is very important. It's no need to cut a hole here. You're not so artistic. I definitely don't want coleslaw. So I've <laughs> seen a lot of, you know, you know, they come to me, and then I say, well, you know, very artistic, but it's not necessary. <laughs> so very important, now how to prevent. As I say, people always show you and share with you. They are very nice people. But position is very important. If you don't position the baby properly, then you're going to cause a lot of uh, challenges. So the first thing you have to do to hold the baby is support the neck. Forearm, tuck the baby bum in. So the baby is relaxed and the baby body remain neutral. That is first thing you have to do called what we call the uh, stability. St you may support your arm and your elbow. Always remember, when they're on their left hand, far, far away, cover, support your breast. Don't ever, ever, you know, touch the areola because baby, you're holding the areola and you're fighting with the baby for the areola. So no way baby can get the whole breast. So the critical success rate is far, far away. No need to lift up or pull down, just support. And the baby go in and cover the whole breast. And the neck remains supported. That is called cross cradle. Okay, and the other hand come over and that is called cradle. And to release a child and do a football release and then swing the baby back. And that is called the football position. Again, I'd like to share with you 
why I show you the correct method. Now, very important, some baby on the breast, Jane, they actually turn outwards. Yes, now I've experienced that before. <laughs> you think you can drink? No way. Mm. And mother often say to me, might have a lot of milk, my milk is dribbling everywhere, but baby say back to me, I'm a whisperer, until long, I never got one drop. Yeah. Because it's all wasted, because he never go deep latch. Number two, right, even Eric and the rest of father can try. Press your head down like that. <laughs> Put your head down like this. Example, I just show you. Okay. You think you can drink? No. <laughs> no. So oh. you can see sometimes this is a picture. Mm. Mother accidentally forgot and press the baby head down like that. And of course, you're diving in, no way you can latch. Yeah, that's No true. way you can empty the breast properly. You're going to end very slow. Okay. So I'm for me, two. sorry, Dr. Wong, like back then, because um, I, I felt like the size of my breast was a disadvantage. So I kept using a lot of pillows. I used bolsters. I used whatever I could grab around the house to, to support the baby. W would you recommend doing that? I mean, whatever it takes, right, to get it done. Or what would, what's your thoughts? Yeah, Jane, the first thing you have to do and the moms out there is learn the correct technique. I showed you before. So we actually try the correct technique. Have a pillow support. Some mm. people, pillows are very good. They give you a good support. So you have what we call the two principles. Mm -hmm. So proximity, chest to your chest, tummy to your chest. And you're able to support the baby stable. They call stability and proximity. And that is the first step you have to do. So therefore, number two, don't ever wrap the baby up to breastfeed mm, like this. Okay. Baby, breastfeeding is free. So they actually can tell you, mom, hey, hey, I'm, uh, I, I, you know, I have difficulty, you know, you're pushing me too hard or whatever the baby can tell you. It's a baby's reaction. So breastfeeding is two people, not one person, your baby yeah. and you. And Papa, you don't forget, you also can look around and say, hey, Aga, maybe you're falling asleep um, because breastfeeding <laughs> is very sleepy. Your baby is, you know, dropping down, you know. You know. <laughs> That's why this is called family affair. So look at this picture. I get very upset. You can see Jane, she is accidentally putting the hand on the baby's head like that. You think the baby can suck? Oh, yeah. Now the no. ladies out there, put your hand on your husband's head and press it in and see if you can suck. <laughs> All right. Number two, mother got very blessed breast, heavy and big, just now I share with you. You can see because of gravity itself, and she's hunching. She's bringing herself forward. And you can see the base will not drain properly. She's going to have mastitis, you ask me. But because the stagnant of the flow is not there. At the same time, you can see the baby is too low. All I have to do is nothing much. Prop the baby higher and ask her to support the baby in the correct manner and then lean back and breastfeed in style. So that's why it's a little common mistake. We can help mom to overcome it. So that's why it's important that you have to start to write. So Dr. Wong, is there any prep work that you think can be done during pregnancy for breastfeeding? Like any preparations that can be made? Uh, during my antenatal class, I spend a lot of time checking the mother's breast. Sometimes, as you say, pumping, your flange size is very important, the correct flange size, and also how to prepare yourself 36 weeks onwards, taking care of your breast, massage, later I'm going to share with you, at the same time, also clear some debris. So how to make sure you, whether you know what sort of a nipple you have. So pinch test, in, thumb and the index finger at the edge of the nipple, push back, close, and pull. A lot of debris will come out as well. You can clean them from 36 to onwards. So when the milk comes in, they're able to flow through properly. Under 36 weeks, you should not touch your breast because breast touching and manipulating is a form of a natural, you know, induction of labor. 
So your doctor will be a bit sensitive about that. Okay? Okay. Plant size, make sure you get the right plant size. Sometimes you over enthusiastic, you over pump, it can actually cause a damage between your joint. Imagine this joint at the junction at the breast areola and the nipple. When you pull too much, you can see that it's actually going to cause a lot of tension. And then at the end, you can cause what we call blanching. Oh. No, and it can be very painful when, yes. you know, when you stop and you feel, oh, there's a shooting pain. <laughs> and you misunderstood that it's mastitis again, may not be. Sometimes the plant size is wrong and the whole area becomes bulging out like a like yes. cupcake. You know what I mean? <laughs> All this is very important. I say to mom, learn to reverse. Later on, you see my massage that is called reverse and then flatten the areola down. Otherwise, it's very bulging in the basin. So mastitis is actually red, can be wedged, and therefore you must manage it. Free, feed the baby frequently and make sure the baby swallow. No point feeding if you can't hear the swallow sound. Once mm -hmm. the baby suckle, they establish they want to suck, should follow by the swallow sound. The olfactory muscle move the strip the breast, and actually you can see the ear movement here as well, because it also moves the ear here. So these are visual signs. Mom can take note and be aware and alert about it. If we don't manage properly from simple redness, inflamed, and can be infected, and then this is called breast abscess. That can be quite, you know, frightening for mom. So seek help and make sure we do things right. Massage, you can see this mother is engorged. So in my class, I teach them how to massage and reduce this sort of lymphatic system to get it flowing. And that energy flowing is very important. So correct massage means a lot as well. And well, so sometimes if your baby actually have a bottle, you've got to make sure you can see the bottle. This is a bulging bit. I'll show you. Ideally, we don't bottle until one month later. You can see here, there are imitation of mother's teeth, so the baby's lips should cover this margin. It's designed in that manner. If baby can suckle like that, baby not going to get much milk because the areola is there. Anything we develop like breast pump or even bottle teeth and things like that is an imitation of a baby suckling on the mother's breast. Yes. So first, the people talk about nipple confusion because if you introduce the bottle too early, they may find that it may confuse them all. I also found that if you want to use a pump, make sure you use hospital grade pump because it's a better machine. And then it's, a, you know, you start off correctly. After you establish whatever pump, whatever method you're going to latch a baby, Baby super good already. Master yes. the skill already. And you should master the skill as well. Oh yes, Dr. Wong, I had this little trick with my baby last time because I think she would fall asleep while I was breastfeeding. And uh, someone told me to tickle this part of the oh. baby. That Very works. good question. Okay. <laughs> Do you use the ear to breastfeed? No. <laughs> Correct. Well, I was so quite curious. I'm a body why. language teacher. Yeah. When baby stop, you should actually touch the chin. If the baby got a breast in, you should touch the chin. Ah, the chin is I the one see. To breastfeed, correct? Yes. Yeah, you touch the chin. Can you all yes, see? That, I put it that makes more sense, actually. You touch the chin. You should actually say, suck. You don't, people's just assumption, wake the baby up, pick the finger, pick the feet, <laughs> and pick the backside. Well, those are just in assumption that I wake the baby out, I pick her like this, you may. Some even mother even try to pull the baby off the breast pretending. Or imagine <laughs> you pull, he pull, he will let, let go. Eventually come <laughs> off. You're going to scream down the whole place. Yeah. Again, mother always desperate out there. I'm sure you want the baby to do well. But again, awareness of doubtful. So tickle the chin. Like I, example, I'm on stage, I'm talking. You give me wrong cue. Will I able to guess what you're saying to me? 
No, but yeah. Is, so <laughs> here I say drink. Yeah, and this makes like, more sense. <laughs> okay. Now people also ask me, you know, medical approach to satisfy a breastfeeding mother. All right. What are the diet you should know? In the Western side, we only talk about balanced diet. A mother breastfeeding is very thirsty and also is very hungry. So you choose wisely. Right? Whole grain take a longer time to digest, slowly release the energy rather than fight grain. It may give you instant energy like a firework, boom, after that you're hungry again. So that's why breastfeeding, you require about 350 to 500 calories. That's why breastfeeding can help you get back to shape. The basic metabolism rate never changes. Okay, so make healthy choices. Make sure you've got plenty of fluids. Make sure you've got enough rest. Because after delivery, your digestion is not that good. So you've got to make sure don't eat too something too rich. You know, easy to digest. You know, some easy food that is most of the food is fish. But the only thing mother asked me, why well, yeah, fish can have mercury? Well, do you believe in that? Mm, well, not really. sea <laughs> fish, yes, Jane. Deep sea fish do have mercury. So eat something very easy, you know, as long as not deep sea fish, I think should be fine. Okay. And most of the fish are actually in the market. We Chinese believe in taking fat fin. Oh, right? Western okay. side, we believe in cod and also what we call salmon. Because yeah, fact, I took a lot of salmon, salmon during that time. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, because why? Vitamin, you know, is full of uh, you know, uh, uh this omega three and yes. six. Yeah, mm -hmm. DHA very super important for the baby's brain. Right. So, so if they don't food. get their nutrients from food, then would it be uh recommended that we just you know fill up on vitamins and supplements or food is still better, you would say? Yeah. Good question, Jane. Mm -hmm. Ideally fill up with natural resources. Because your stomach, you know, may not able to digest a lot of supplement yet. So unless the mother totally not well, then doctor give you some supplement because your appetite totally gone. Then I suggest that you actually pack yourself with very high quality soup. I developed a lot of galactongo soup in the previous institution. And that galactongo soup, that means the soup able to enhance your milk flow itself, oh. you know. Example, I'm a signature dish for me. Now every hospital know, every chef know about it. It's called a green papaya and fish bones soup. You brew until milky color. And the oxytocin present inside the papaya, the greener they are, the better. Help is part of the enhancer of the milk production, hormonal itself. It sounds very yummy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very yummy. You just learn the secret and you'll be fine. So mother can be very stressed. First 10 days, something light, not too heavy. All right, not too strong. So she can able to pack up her energy slowly and absorb the nutrition. At the same time, very important, is able to, you know, enhance the milk flow. So that is a basic thing, what we do in overseas. Mm -hmm. So there's certain food. I'm also, my late father was also a physician. And uh, very important, we talk about anemia, depression, constipation, engorgement, water retention, galatonga soup, and so on. Then, therefore, these are the things, you know, girls out there, you want to actually take a recipe, you may, and it helps. Personally, for me, I had problem with anemia and the doctor prescribed me a lot of, um, you know, the iron tablets and all that. And I felt that it just made me so constipated. It was terrible. So I, I would also prefer to have gone with food. I think it would have been a more natural and better option. So it's really great that you're sharing all these here. <laughs> you're very good, Jane. Uh, iron is one of the reasons iron not only improves your hemoglobin, but its side effect is constipation. Yes. <laughs> and it's Went terrible. In, uh, in, in case mother got, you know, some of them may have a cut, a dysotomy cut, and then sitting there with the hemorrhoids and everything can yes. be quite painful. I <laughs> found that mother got severe hemorrhoids and can actually, you know, uh, inhibit the milk production itself. Oh, really? So wow. mother general well-being is very important. 
model not only breast itself and automatically function itself, at the same time, also other factors can be. Yes, you just need the whole overall. Tired, yeah. All right, you're overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> you're constipated and you're yawning all the time. Yeah, too much going on. <laughs> All right, and you have visitors never stop coming in. Oh, uh, yeah. I want you to be out there, organized, okay? Yeah. And what time, what time you can come and visit? That's right. But now it's COVID. I think mother, actually, I done my own survey. Most of my patients from my antenatal class, they're actually breastfeeding much longer now. Oh, wow. From home. Oh, interesting. Okay. Huh? And so we have some pros. Pop it on the breast. <laughs> Suck, 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 then back to work. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I found that they, they seem to be more relaxed at home. They're mm -hmm. able to do the job quite well. So I hope that I haven't done the, the national survey yet. And that is something I think nationally we have to look into it. Might mm -hmm. be an advantage. Right? You can yeah. bond with your child whenever you're fed up with the work. You, as long as you put in eight hours, that is good enough. Unless you've got <laughs> deadline. You know, you can actually at least and you can eat proper food at work. Whoa, how can you have proper food? Next minute you have meeting, next minute your boss calling you. Very true. <laughs> mm, all right. Yes. All these are uh, general factors, environments also play a place when you talk about success of breastfeeding. Mm. Yes. Now, people ask me what not to eat. Mm. Everything moderation is fine. Okay. But there are certain food we are a bit concerned. Example, unpasteurized food, all right, not only for pregnancy, if it's not fresh, it may contaminate and lead to you know, some form of food poisoning. So like raw eggs and then, you know, uh, uh, chicken. So it doesn't mean after delivery you cannot eat egg and chicken. You know that most mother ask me, can I eat egg and chicken after delivery? I say, why not? And she said, my mom said poisonous. It's not true. It's not poisonous. Egg is wholesome, full of choline, and chicken is very wholesome as well. But make sure it's fresh. That's all. Okay? Okay. All right. Poorly prepared food, be careful. And sometimes very important, mother, you know, preservative, processed food, a bit, con you know, a bit concerned, may not be too good for baby. Fatty things, you want to lose weight, right? You don't want too much. It, high in, you know, empty calories. High glycemic index, like this sort of uh, gato, uh, you know, quail lapis, uh, Chinese New Year, just over. Quail lapis is sinful, you know. It's packed <laughs> with calories, very yummy, but a small piece is fine. Uh, even the, the sweet meat and things like that. But sometimes yeah. we need a bit of comfort food. Chocolate, black chocolate, milk chocolate, small piece is fine. Okay. Moderation. <laughs> uh, correct. And also, if you've never eaten something, I talk a lot about, you know, certain things. Always start with antenatally. Whatever we eat antenatally, your baby already built up our oral tolerance. Mm. So, for example, <laughs> can you eat durian? Uh, durian durian and chili? Chili, no, right? I'm pretty sure chili you cannot... Right? I'm not very good at this. <laughs> Actually, uh, whatever you eat will not come out as such. Even right? alcohol, is it? Yeah, I'll talk about alcohol. So mm. the flavor, actually, baby, about it picks about an hour and the stomach will absorb, but the small intestine absorb most of it. When I analyze the breast milk, there is element of it. But when actually you're going to, after you've eaten durian, Jane for one hour, then you breastfeed, I squeeze a drop, and then ask you to taste it. You can't taste much of the flavor because it makes them blurred. Oh, ah, I'll try but, next but time. <laughs> it, there is a flavor. Some baby may take to it, some baby may reject it. I see. So every child is different. Again, it's unique. So chili is spicy food, egg digestion, nothing wrong. Like, you know, so some races, they eat a lot of spicy food. The baby yes. not going to go on the mother's breast and say, oh, mom, it's too spicy. I don't <laughs> like it. So yeah. Therefore, again, it's acquired. Culture, you know, environments, our tradition also works in a lot of places. 
Uh, there are certain food in the uh, UK, mother always talk about it, like sage, peppermints and parsley. But actually, I just say small moderation should be okay, everything, and see how your breast react. But it's well known that too much peppermint, you know, uh, actually can actually deter into the, you know, uh, what we call the production of the milk itself. So monitor yourself. You may be more sensitive than other mothers. Oh, okay. Baby factor. You know, baby anatomical and baby suckling factors can affect breastfeeding as well, beside mother. So maybe it's tongue tied, all right? And the baby no way can, you know, suck on the mother properly. She, no way the tongue can go up. And yeah. baby jaundice, baby premature, all this actually has contributing to the downfall. So, well, jaundice, let me just talk about physiological jaundice. People always say, oh, because my baby is jaundice, I need to supplement my baby. Correct. If you don't have enough. The gestation of the diabetic mother, if you actually don't, uh, uh, actually, uh, especially type 2 diabetic, gestation of diabetic, usually only initial part. Baby got a bit of problem, and they got higher risk of a hypoglycemia. Then if you don't have enough colostrum, doctor may order. But take it as a form of medicine. So in Australia, actually Melbourne, we actually starting collecting harvesting colostrum at 36 weeks. All right. So that mm -hmm. one you can add to, you know, ask me after that if you yeah. want to. But for most of the baby, they all got jaundice because inside there, the mother regular cell carry the oxygen through the umbilical cord to feed him. And then through the vein, then the two arteries bring back the deoxygenated blood for interchange at the placenta. Now the cord is separated and the baby use their own lungs. So excessive regular cell, no more job to do. They break down, they release a serum bilirubin, SB. Remember SB, S plus SB. And if they are fat soluble, difficult to break down. And they like to stain on the skin, fat inflammation. So the baby on the second day, evening to third day, begins to show signs of a, you know, slight yellow tinge. So let the doctor and the medical staff take care of it. So you yourself want to, you know, roughly assess, look from head down. Head and neck, like likely to be quite light. Upper trunk, five to 12 milligram, not so severe, is a below the waist and down below is the most severe one. But again, let us, you know, talk about it and then discuss with you. So not to worry too much. Did your baby got jaundice? Um, my first one, no, she didn't have. My second one did. And I also heard from people that, you know, who they had five children, they said the first one didn't have. Then when it comes down to the last child, the jaundice is like full blown. So I don't know how true is this. Also. I don't know why it happens to a lot of parents. Oh, well, <laughs> the size of the baby, gestational age, the effectiveness of breastfeeding and how much the baby able to suckle from the mother's hydration state all play an important part. That's why I say monitor, make a feed chart, and then the baby should pee, right? First day, at least one pee, second day, two pees, three days, three pee, very easy to remember, <laughs> four days, four pee, suckling six to eight week pee. And the bladder is very small, you know, 20 cc. So yeah. look at the, sometimes you forgot to change, right, Jane? And yeah. then it can be pee three times already. And mom <laughs> said to me, baby pee only one diaper. Oh. So again, awareness. And yeah. the pool color. Do you remember the pool color changes as well, Jane? Yes, I remember that. Webbing. For our first day, what color? It was a very mustard kind of color. I still remember. Yeah. Right? First day, oh, no, was first day I think it was the black. Yeah, the black yeah, first. Right. Then followed by the mustard. Yeah. yeah. Very black yes. and gluey after that become like we Chinese say from Tsu Ma Hu become Tao Suan. That oh, indicating yeah. the baby color, the or the pool indicating the baby is having sufficient. Baby all lose weight by 7%. I don't want you to worry about it. So breastfeeding, hear the baby, monitor the chart, not sure, let us discuss. Okay. Okay. Uh, after can... the 10 days, the baby should pick up the normal birth weight. And uh, as I say, you know, let us discuss rather than jump to conclusion. I don't think baby had enough milk. Okay. okay. Milk production <laughs> is endocrine and autocrine. Why is endocrine? First three months is hormonal influence, right? Mm -hmm. The hormones send the signals to the brain, the brain, mother's brain from the pituitary 
then the oxytocin and the uh, actually the uh, the the hormones itself the uh, the actually prolactin will actually produce a milk the oxytocin on the other side will contract the the cells and you release the milk so it's hormonal influence after three months no more hormonal influence it's called autocline so the first two weeks you must learn to establish whatever herbs we give you is first you know two weeks get it established all right okay thank you so important understand few understanding what is called milk production three months later prolactin hormone decreases milk maintenance is baby and you emptying of the breast and you can also pump and then okay. uh, let down is a reward so mother always think a uh, baby sucker only got let down you're wrong visual can actually i have one mom look at the pump for milk let down uh, like a like a monsoon so every mom, mom is different again always do you know sudden and extreme pain anxiety tiredness psychological problem can cause you know you know uh you know all this can cause your downfall as well okay all right now come to breast massage breast is fat inside there the glands the glands are hold by the net called the connective tissue after the layer of fat and layer of skin so i developed some technique right there are thousand and one technique but i just show you the difference okay right massage you know in a in a my manner i found that mother's breast not only get you know without sagging at the same time and you also help improve the milk flow. Holding the okay. palm also very important. You need to support your wrist if you're using the palm frequently, otherwise couple tunnel syndrome, straining. And when I hold the palm this manner, I make sure the flange is equal pressure, so able to empty the milk properly. And then uh, this one you cannot see. I actually massage a mother using my method and the father using other method. And you can see one minute later, the difference, totally difference. Okay, Dr. Wong, maybe we can move things up a little faster yep, after this. Faster? Okay, yes, this is a thank massage. You. Yep. Now show I show you. you, this you must see. Okay. <laughs> okay, this you must see. Okay, this massage, let me go back. Okay. We're going Let's to show you the alternative uh, way. This is of a very important. We're going to finish already. To and you can see the mother breast I the mother massage. should not have saggy breast. But all right. You got to motion. push up. Okay. My student been and waiting for to see this. Oh. I developed for right. you. Circular motion. And then twelve o'clock. Then the three o'clock. Then three o'clock. Right. Circular motion. Then and the then nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Then scissors that, going to on do the a areola. Scissors on the areola. I'm pressing down. And then she's going to massage the areola. You can see. Well done. After one minute, right. compared to Next, this breast. She's going to hold the breast. That is a lot breast different. And do nice gentle and vibration. That's it. Well done. And okay. Well, herbs some things. There are thousands of one things in the world. Just a bit mindful. Uh, first three months, you may want to take some herbs. So everyone is different. Every country is different. So you've got to take high dosage. Okay. I don't quite like this because our one mother takes high dosage to come back with a, a bit of a down below infection. So a bit uh, careful. Uh, whatever you do, just a bit careful. Supplement. You can supplement the baby if it's ordered by the doctor. I develop a lot of method. This is called cup feeding, okay. baby paste. To support the baby see well. Now, yeah. you put right. the cup on the this. lower lips and of the, the baby. Actually, oh. take the Actually milk. empty the breast. The okay. uh, empty the milk from so the cup. And baby, and the baby actually, actually you can control. Using you feed the baby, you must not, not pick the tissue or the shape. Don't hurry the baby. Father, you can master this skill. Three, I do this method because it's better. Because you are guiding the syringe, you actually put insert the baby learn to suck on your finger, 
and on the other hand, you got actually able to support the baby to you. And you are actually got control and you're able to do the job in the correct manner. You can learn in the class. This is a nursing supplemental system. Okay, also, sometimes for adopted mother, some mother may want to use nipple shield. But again, first month, ideally, WHO say, you know, UNICEF also say that ideally we try not to introduce a bottle. Uh, it's not confusion. Baby can become very fussy. Let the baby go on the breast, establish well. If you need to supplement, use the various method I show you. But after 28 days, ideally, you should use a, a bottle. Express the breast milk, give it to husband, and let him feed the baby. Be involved. And the it called imaging association. Baby see papa, the bottle come out, the image of the bottle, see you, the two boobs come out, and the baby never got confused. Okay. So it's a bumpy journey. You get uh -huh. there at the end with everybody's support and medical write out your very dear husband. And we get there at the end. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Wong, for your insightful sharing. I'm sure a lot of our moms out there have learned so much from you. Okay, and for now, we have physician Eric. He's from Yuyan Sang, and he's here to share about breastfeeding for TCM perspective. So, Eric, the ball is in your court now. Hi, Jane. Hi. Yes. So, uh, we are going to share with everyone today on how TCM can help to boost the milk production and what constitute the production of milk in the traditional Chinese medicine. Okay. Okay, first before we go into the production of milk, we need to understand the two main organ systems in the traditional Chinese medicine that's involved in the production of milk. So mainly the liver, which controls the emotion, and the spleen, which produces the qi and blood, and therefore also increase the production of milk. So also, for liver, the liver meridian in our human body actually passes through the chest area. That's why when we are emotionally tense up or what, sometimes we feel like a bit tightness in the chest, especially the side of the chest. So if there's a stagnation of qi in the liver, it will affect the flow of uh, blood and milk in supply uh, in the body and therefore affect the production. Oh, maybe that was what was happening with me. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so actually, uh, uh, when you doing a breastfeeding, you try to relax. Even if there's a, a shortage of milk supply, don't force it. Don't like make yourself too overly stressed over it. Mm. Yeah, I think I was doing that a lot. I was just so stressed and like crying. Why? Why am I not getting any milk? I mean, it was a vicious cycle. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's definitely important for a family support as well. Yeah, so a yeah. good father need to be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the father also stressed and how then? Ah. <laughs> Yeah, so actually it's good at least that both share the burden. Yes, it will like yeah. yes. So let's take a look at how this uh, pro milk production is produced uh, in uh, traditional Chinese medicine. So if there's a deficiency in qi and blood, which is what normally occur when the uh, spleen is not so strong, and this uh, circulation of the nutrients to the tissue of the breast is not good enough, so especially those uh, just now mentioned by uh, Dr. Wong, is, uh, those with anemic, uh, the production of uh, milk due to the supply and the tissue or nutrients is insufficient. And therefore, sometimes, especially with the stagnation of qi, not enough qi to build, uh, qi to flow, not strong enough as it uh, gets stagnant in a certain area in the body, it may lead to the formation of phlegm, which is called tan. And this phlegm may even clog up, clog up the, the ducts and the production uh, channel of the milk, leading to the lower supply. Mm, interesting. So, uh, oh yes. So actually, just now I mentioned about stress. Yes, this is another factor. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yes, this liver controls the emotion. So it is good <laughs> to be able to relax. It controls not only the emotion, it, it allows the release, relief of a uh, release of something. So the, the the production of milk involves the release of milk in the, from the body. So if uh, the liver is stagnant, mm -hmm. the 
it is hard for the blood to flow and the circulation. So sometimes it may lead to the, uh, the limited milk supply and especially uh, and the production as well. So these two works together, the spleen and the liver. So I understand that um, you know, during confinement, sometimes they would like to give us um, TCM medicine. Mm. Are there any herbs that we have to avoid while breastfeeding? Uh, uh, actually, uh, herbs, it depends on those. Uh, uh, sometimes if let's say uh, mom is not feeling well or we want to take some like, uh, herbs, TCM herbs, it is best to consult uh, a traditional Chinese physician for assessment. You know, some herbs may be uh, not so good for the contains like high, high level of alkaloids or something which may not be good for baby. I see. Uh, so, uh, it is best to consult if you are sick. So in other cases, like, some of them, uh, some of the mothers, they may, if uh, you have heard of, like, uh, they use certain herbs to improve uh, the production of milk. Yes. Like, uh, some, some of them, they say, uh, there's uh, this maya, this malt can help in the production of milk. But actually, you have to take note of that because uh, this malt is good at a low, low, low dosage, low amount. You, you go for about... Uh, 100 grams, oh, 200 grams. And this, this is actually a method used to stop, stop the production of milk. So oh, it is, dear. When, 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 uh, at a certain point of time, uh, when uh, moms decide to uh, stop milking, so, so this, this is a formula to stop. So actually, if you are using more, you just control the supply. And oh, also, I see. Yes. And also, so a little I, bit will work, but you take too much and then that's it. It goes the yes. other way already. So when in doubt, you have to consult uh, someone professional yeah. to uh, advise on that. So Thank also you. in the traditionally, there's also a way to stop the production of milk. There's an outer, it's a, it's a kind of mineral, traditional Chinese medicine mineral, so we call it like mang xiao, which they put on top of the chest. This is to help to uh, relieve those symptoms. Uh, if let's say you're going to uh, stop milking, that those uh, ten, tender feeling or discomfort, it helps to... Uh, oh. Like because the, the um mummy is feeling painful and needs a yes. little break for a bit. I see. Yes. This will reduce the production. So uh, if, but in this is uh those traditional way in Singapore, not so many people uses this as well. So I if see. it's good to just uh, avoid if that there's this sort of uh, uh sometimes you have seen like uh read things over the internet or try try to because there's some credibility. You need yeah. to verify. Yes. <laughs> or like to go to the internet and self-diagnose yes. and everything. So, so sometimes it, it is good to uh, seek some advice on that. Yes. <laughs> so now let's take a look uh, at uh, how do we produce, uh, increase the milk supply through Chinese, Chinese herbs. So when we're talking about uh, improving uh, milk production in traditional Chinese medicine, we have to look into qi, blood, and this jie yi, jie yi, means the relief tensions, means the stress. So there are herbs to help the, in the uh, production of uh, qi and, and improve the circulation of qi and blood, which includes like uh, the tang sen, huang qi, and also have the, those uh, uh, longan, dried longan, which is also very good for the production of blood. And in, 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 there's also other herbs that help in the uh, production of blood, which are such as uh, the Jiegen, and uh, Nai Sen, Lu uh, Lu Tong, uh, Tong Chao, all these, these are some of the herbs that can uh, help to, uh, with the production of milk. Uh, but uh, remember, uh, it is not that you have to spam everything and it, it has to be in moderation and in a controlled amount. And for the relief of stress, it is good. Sometimes you have some herbs, you know, some, of the, some of the mothers may be too over stressed and on, oh, my milk supply is low. And sometimes the stress can build up until they cannot sleep. Cannot sleep. Yes. <laughs> and yes. So sometimes uh, herbs that help in sleeping, it's actually not so much a herb. It's, it's so-called uh, also, uh, also some kind of form of food. It's a lotus, lotus seed, uh, the lily bark, this kind of thing will help to release the stress and help in the sleep and build up the, build up the, the body's capability to manage stress. We have herbs like... Uh, San Yao, uh, Gou Qi Zi, Gou Ji. Uh, these are very good herbs to build up the, uh, the liver to allow it to uh, take stress from the surrounding and the mother's inner body. So uh, these are readily available you know, 
in a lactation uh, boosting packs or herbs, and it can be found in a most uh, uh, in the modern traditional Chinese medicine establishment. I see. So I'm uh, just curious, right? Um, for TCM, can acu uh, acupuncture actually help with boosting the milk supply? Uh, yes. Uh, there are also uh, uh, some uh, cases of acupuncture being able to uh, boost the uh, milk supply and improve the circulation to the... It is some sort of also like massage. It complements it. But remember, do, do go for the those uh, certified one. It's not that you go to any uh, massage parlor or any uh, those uh, in the neighborhood is like not certified because uh, it, it poses a risk for uh, of infection or other serious health issue. I see. Okay. So, okay. Moving on, we are almost coming to the end. I have a few questions to ask the both of you. So um, someone asked, uh, anonymous person asked, I would like to ask if both sides are sore from breastfeeding, do we still latch the baby on or can we put a rest for a few days? So Dr. Wong, I think this would be uh, more relevant to you. So um, would you need me to repeat the question again? Yes, yeah, so sorry. So um, they asked whether, you know, if both sides are sore from breastfeeding, do we still latch the baby or we can, you know, just take a rest from it for a few days and then we continue again? What do you think about this? Ideally, mother got sore nipple is purely started off, you did not do the right techniques. So I see. readjust, let us do the technique, readjust again and ensure baby got deep latch. I often have mothers say, bear with me for one minute. Of course, it's very sore when you latch the baby. So once the baby settle on deep latch and after a minute, the pain actually disappear. And then I when see. she finished breastfeeding one side, I release the baby after 10 minutes, uh, you know, I could see the nip so nipple actually be improved. So therefore, oh. it's not necessary to stop breastfeeding. Let us assess and sit through our breastfeeding with you. Are likely to be caused by wrong technique. I see. Okay, thank you for that. And um, this is for both Dr. Wong and Eric. Like, have you encountered anyone complaining to you about breastfeeding, reducing breast size? Because we've got people questioning that here. Like, can breastfeeding actually make your breast smaller or how does this work? I <laughs> oh, sorry, first. Dr. Wong first. Yes, yeah, so sorry. Yeah. Breast is consists of fat, purely mm -hmm. fat. So therefore, if your diet is not too good, and they are actually a plus a massage. Sometimes mother squeeze too hard. So it may actually, uh, mother also after delivery lose weight as well. Don't forget, go back to 100, 300 to 50 calories to 500 calories. If you're not eating well, all those actually is massage, mass, uh, your breast, and also your, your diet itself, and your very light diet, you don't take enough adequate fat, you know, for the needs of the baby, baby still need fat. Don't forget full milk and high milk. High milk yeah. is fat. <laughs> so the baby mother actually can cause reducing inside. I've seen it myself. Because I, I see, see our patients. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, so... Uh, the Eric... patient counterpart, in fact, they increase in one cup size. Because during pregnancy, the, the, the cup, the breast grow, you see? And yes. they were able to maintain one cup size up rather than reducing their own size. I Why? See. Because the diet, again, they are a bit more daily products compared to us. Yes, okay. So moving this question to Eric, have, have you experienced anyone coming in and complaining to you about breast size, getting smaller after breastfeeding and all? It varies according to individuals in the, about the body constitution of you and the made out of the body. If a body is weak by itself, and it's, uh, the the production of milk, the supply and the, the firmness well, is, is determined from the body constitution. It's not just not like uh, I do breastfeeding, it will change or it all depends. It, it, it is not up to the it so, is not a standard place. So Eric, with that, can any TCM herbs help, you know, with engorgement of the breast? Uh there are actually papaya actually we are one oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's that's a form, it's a mu kwa. In TCM, we also use a mu kwa. It's another form. It also helps to, in the 
uh, enhancement of the, of the breast. But uh, I do think you know, it is not just, it's not like uh, a wonder herbs or wonder as you need uh, your uh, post, uh, post pregnancy recovery, you need to recover well, rest well, eat well. And the important thing is the exercise and, and, and you know, uh, lifestyle. Yes. I see. Dr. Wong, I have a question for you. So um, people out there, they want to know how do we collect colostrum in the 36 week? Well, over there, what we do is very important. You massage your breast and you have an uh, a empty syringe. All you have to do after shower, 36 week hours, you massage your breast. I have shown you. Then you at the edge of the, actually, of the uh, nipple, the areola, you press back, you push. After that, what you do is very important. This is called the empty syringe. Then you actually hold it, and then you actually got some colostrum, and you just harvest this manner. Ooh. And you spend about an, uh, one minute. No need to be too long. After that, you put in the sleeve, back to the sleeve. Then you mark the time and the date, and you put in the freezer bag, and you collect them. It won't be a lot, but not to worry. And then uh, actually, whatever you collect after 36 weeks, we can always throw it out and get it back to baby if needed. I see. Okay, we have a question from someone. So she asked that, she said she's been breastfeeding for seven months apparently, and she does it side lying position at night. So she asked whether it's okay if she doesn't burp her baby at night because she has tried many times to burp him and then he will sleep nicely. But then, you know, once he wakes up, then he'll burp. So it's... What do you recommend over there? You want me to answer first? Yes, Dr. Wong. This question okay. is for you. Uh, breastfeeding after baby, actually, you need to burp when they're young. All right? Because uh, it enhances to actually get rid of the wind. But once the baby established well, after four months, they burp easily or they fart. Right from young, they either fart or they actually burp. But four months, baby know how to belt out, you know, burp by himself. It's no need to burp burp baby that much. As long as you deep latch, and if you're bottle feeding, make sure the bottle, the milk is covered the teeth, baby swallow very little air. So it's not necessary to burp baby, and you can actually just settle baby. By four months, most baby will probably sleep a longer stretch of the night, if the routine is right. I see. Okay. So, um, Dr. Wong, wait, hang on. Eh? I'm so sorry. Getting a last question out here. Bear with me a little bit. Okay, but at the same time, I need to, uh, I would like to ask Eric a question also. So um, earlier, you, I asked you whether uh, any herbs help with engorgement, right? So what about acupuncture itself? How is the procedure like? You know, uh, do you actually have to, like, how, how does it go? That Do the needles actually have to go onto the breast itself? How does this work? Uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes it may go, uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, we don't just go localized. Sometimes we may go further, like uh, the, the limbs are on, but it depends on the body constitution of the person and the, condi the condition, whether it is uh, due to the stress issue or due to inflammation issue or weakness of spleen issue. All these have to be assessed by the uh, traditional Chinese medicine physician before we can do that. So uh, there is no uh, specific, uh, say, it definitely we have to be on the breast. Or the okay. So, all right, with that, uh, we have actually come to the end of our webinar. It was very fun. It was very insightful. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone for joining us in the webinar, you know, back home. And please do not forget to scan this QR code, okay, to receive a very wonderful goodie bag for the first 150 attendees, okay? So please be fast and uh, scan away. And now I will announce the winners for the $50 Shopee voucher. Okay, uh, if... The slides move too fast, please. Oh, very sorry. Let me get to the platinum partners first. Okay, so the people that made this webinar possible, okay, our platinum partners, Hydroflux and Uyan Sang, and our gold partners, Dumex, Scott's, PCF Sparkle Tots, Nature One Dairy, and our silver partners, Ministry of Health Singapore, Baby Dove, Virtus Fertility Center, and Prudential. And finally, our content partners, Center for Fathering, Moms for Life, and Dads for Life, and Baby Pass. So, okay, let me get to the uh, winners of the Shopee voucher. 
So if you see your name here and you know it's really quick, just take a screenshot of this and you can email us at campaign at tickledmedia.com with your name, contact number within the next three working days to uh, claim your prize for this. So once again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed this really fun and insightful session. Please do participate in our next webinar, which is happening tomorrow. It is titled The First Six Months with Baby, What Nobody Tells You. Okay, and also visit us on spf22.theasianparent.com to find out more about the exciting contest and grand sales during this festival. So thank you once again, everyone, and my two lovely guests as well for taking the time to be here with me and uh, hope to see you all again. Okay, have a lovely night, everyone. Goodbye.